oxalate is going to impact virtually everybody's liver to some degree. And the reason for that is the whole um, cell transporter issue. So liver cells use cell transporters to get sulfate. I always think of them as hands because they're actually coming out from the cell to grab a nutrient and pull it in. So you've got this little cell transporter. It goes into the fluid that's around the cell to find sulfate. Sulfate's one of the things that the liver is a really big consumer of. This particular cell transporter that can move sulfate, it can also move oxalate. So if that cell transporter goes into the fluid around the cell and picks up an oxalate molecule to pull it into the cell. It gets it into the cell and essentially the cell says, well, I can't do anything with that, right? You didn't get the right thing. So what does the cell then do? This is where the problems get set up. The cell then says, right, I've only got so much energy. I need that sulfate. So you cell transporter are going to drop that oxalate in this little garbage pile over here and you're going to go back out and you're going to get the sulfate sulfate that I wanted. Okay. So then the cell transporter goes out and tries again. Essentially what happens is you get this oxalate that's kind of accumulating in the cell because it's being brought into the cell. The cell then goes, yikes, not that. The cell transporter drops it and it uses the energy that the cell transporter needs to go back out to get the nutrient. That oxalate that's accumulating in the cell, unfortunately doesn't stay in a nice little neat garbage pile in the corner. It circulates in the cytosol, which is the fluid inside the cell, and it is incredibly toxic for mitochondria. So it takes energy to get that cell transporter out. And then you've got this oxalate, which is affecting the mitochondria, and they're going, <coughs> having a hard time turning over here, can't make much energy. So the cell is going to keep biasing in, in favor of getting trying to get the nutrients in that it needs and not cleaning out so this could be part of the reason behind what we see as oxalate dumping which is these big gushes of oxalate that come out and go into the bloodstream all at once because finally the cells the tissue of one kind or another goes right we have enough energy things are going good you know Monique's been taking her B vitamins <laughs> we've got our taurine we're ready right and then all of them are going to secrete this stuff stuff out as much as they can. So it tends to hit the bloodstream in a wave. And so then we get this wave of oxalate, we clear it, things settle down, then we get another wave of oxalate, we have to clear it, things settle down. That tends to be the pattern over time. Initially, you may feel like all you're doing is oxalate dumping, and you may not be getting enough break between one set of tissues moving stuff into the, into the bloodstream and another set of tissues moving stuff into the bloodstream. So you might have almost constant dumping. I had that in the beginning for about six months. I just sort of felt like I was almost constantly dumping, but I was aware that I felt just a little bit better and that my digestion was better. So I hung in there with it. Then I started to see, oh, dump. And then I would get a break of a week or so and then dump. And then I'd get a break of a week or so. And then the next pattern was shorter dumping. I was sort of dumping for a week or two and then I would get a week or two off and then I would dump for it. So it started to be that the dumping was shorter and the breaks were a bit longer. So that, that was interesting. And then it's started to be that they were much further apart, the oxalate dumping, but sometimes they were really big. And I think that's because you can start to hit the bones giving up oxalate. And the bones are actually one of the biggest storage locations in the body for oxalate. But they remodel slowly. So though those big ones can come later, but as long as I was kind of prepared and I was doing the right things, then I would sail through them. If I had taken my eye off the target and was off doing other things, I could get rolled over at that point. So we just kind of have to stay aware of the fact that the game's not over just because you start to see some good consistency. Like I got to about 18 months and I kind of went, ooh, I'm done. Nope, I wasn't. Anyway, and then the long game turns into, so for any of you who are still menstruating, I'll give you a heads up. The long game was as I was sort of done the big stuff and I was just like the mid game is some of the big stuff like the bones and then it sort of starts to tail off. You'll still get some of the occasional dump, but it kind of tails off in the end game. But then I would dump every time I had a period. So the long, long game where you're getting to the end of the process Process, our hormones do affect oxalate trafficking. So I would start to feel uncomfortable. I would have more urinary tract symptoms, like my, my urethra would feel irritated and almost like I was getting a UTI. And I'd go, 
oh yeah, I'm coming up to my period. And I would do an Epsom salts bath. I would take MSM because by then I could handle MSM. I consider that one of the big guns. I don't want newbies trying MSM yet. And I would take my B vitamins and I would do all this stuff and the symptoms would go away. And sure enough, in a day or two, I'd get my period. So that PMS that people talk about, I'm more and more convinced that PMS may actually have something to do with oxalate as well. Seriously, when in doubt, blame oxalate. But once I was into this sort of end game where it's kind of clean up and where our sex hormones are affecting how it's moving, then I could get out in front of it. Then I started charting my period and I went, oh yeah, next week. Okay, Epsom salt baths, minerals, MSM. Like I would just roll it out before I started to get the symptoms. So it's harder to get out in front of symptoms in the early part of the journey. But once you get into the end game, you can get out in front of them. So there's things to look forward to over time. The more of a toolkit we build for you, the better that you can ride the waves when they hit. That's kind of the net of that discussion.